Let's dip our heads a little deep for a moment. A great saint was sitting in lotus position under a majestic tree when suddenly rose petals rained down on his head. He looked up at the skies and said, why is it raining rose petals? And the gods in heavens replied, we're congratulating you on your talk on emptiness. And the saint replied, but I did not speak of emptiness. And the gods replied, you did not speak of emptiness. We did not hear emptiness. This is why we congratulate you. It's been suggested many, many times that every character, every symbol and every archetype in every story is an aspect of our soul. This means that every story is our story. So there's a reminder of that story of the woman. She wasn't old, but she was lost and hungry, dressed in rags, her long hair braided with rags, rags binding her feet and clad only in rags. In her wandering, she came into a town and the smell wafting from the town square of the noodle cellar reached her nostrils and draw her, drew her into the center square. She approached the noodle stall holder saying, I'm very hungry. May I have a bowl of soup? Stalls. Holder said, be away with you. I have enough of beggars coming here. But he went along with his business, serving his customers. But when he turned around, she was still there. And she said, I will trade you for a bowl of noodles. What can you trade me? said the stall holder. And she said, my song. I have nothing to do with songs. Songs don't pay my bills and feed my children. But the customers standing around all in unison said, give her a bowl of soup. We haven't heard songs. It's a long winter. Let her sing. And very reluctantly, the noodle maker gave her a bowl of soup. And she gave the bowl back and asked for another and another and another. But even though the stall holder was reluctant, the people continued to say, give her, give her more, give her more. We want to hear her song. After six bowls of soup, the woman began to sing. At first, her voice was tremulous quavering, but then it came forth and rose up into the rafters and into the beings of all who were around. The stall holder's eyes filled with tears, pouring down his cheeks, he felt the weight of his burdens, lift 
drifting from him. All those who were standing around, waiting to be served, turned around with tears in their eyes, not of sadness, but somehow of relief, hugging one another rapturously. The song floated down the streets of the town, seeped under the doorways, into the windows. The man who had contemplated suicide suddenly saw a rainbow outside his window. He sighed and put down the knife. The couple who had been fighting suddenly ceased their arguing and embraced one another. And so it went on. That song entered every house, every nook and cranny. And as the song finished, people looked to where the woman had been. And she was nowhere to be seen. But her song remained the people of that town could feel and produce that which they had received for generations afterwards. And then there's a story of Rabbi Abraham. Rabbi Abraham lived at a time when there was great famine in the land, so poverty was the norm. But Rabbi Abraham could play the violin, and he played at every festival occasion. He loved to play at the weddings, particularly of those orphans who came together to be wed. And every evening before the Sabbath day, summer and winter, he would take his violin and play in the houses of the poor in the village, accepting without question what was given him glass of wine, glass of sherbet, whatever it was that they had to give, he received graciously. But in all of his songs, even those played on joyous occasions, it was imbued with a deep sadness and longing that Rabbi Abraham had in his heart. One evening before the Sabbath day, in a very harsh winter's night, even though Rabbi Abraham's wife said, you cannot you are now over 60 years of age. How can you go out in this weather and play? He took his violin and went from house to house. The night went on and Rabbi Abraham's wife was very worried. He had not returned home. So she woke the wagon driver from his sleep and the wagon driver went out to seek for Rabbi Abraham. He went from place to place and they said, yes, he's been here, he's been here. But he was nowhere to be found. But when the wagon driver came back, unsuccessful, it was the time for him to open the doors 
of the synagogue. But when he approached the synagogue, there was the sound of a violin being played. And when he opened the door, there was Rabbi Abraham engrossed in playing a song on his violin. The wagon driver asked him, Why are you here? What happened? And Rabbi Abraham said, As I was returning home and passing by the synagogue, I had thought to go in to find a little comfort and warmth. But then I remembered that it is said that all the spirits come out at night and enter the synagogue to make their prayers. So I was afraid and about to pass when I heard a voice call my name, Rabbi Abraham, come join us. So I went into the synagogue and there were beings, obviously beings, who had passed on. And then Rabbi Bekiva, who I had known had died many years before, came up to me and he said, Before I passed, I had a song in me which I was unable to play, unable to express. May I give it to you so that it may be played? So this that I am playing is that song. And I feel like my heart and my soul has been liberated. No longer did Rabbi Abraham play his violin imbued with any deep sadness and longing. This song, which he played, and played, and played, for the rest of his days, had no trace, no trace whatsoever of longing, sadness, that which is unfulfilled, What do these stories say to us, say for us? Mm -hmm.